So, Flight Sim Expo is this weekend, and uh, it's a good time to make a video. I want to look at this airplane here, and basically do a little bit of a tutorial, I guess, and show you how you can figure some st stuff out about an airplane performance, just from a few simple data points. Because, uh, let's face it, I don't have a lot of information about this airplane. You know, we have this user guide here. There's a good article online here. I recommend reading that. There's, uh, you know, some information here. Propeller diameter. And some performance figures here. Three sixty at sea level, kilometers that is. Okay, so how do you pronounce this airplane? La Tecoer six hundred thirty one. Got it. Okay, just checking. So they give us in here, they give us, let me just skip to the end here. Very nice model, by the way, like awesome detail. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking at the whole thing. Other people have done that. We're just going to look at the flight model and see what we can figure out. Because all we have for information here is we have a few few things here we got wingspan wing area and you know propeller diameter we got engine power and we got some weight some weights here climb rate corresponding to that weight but they don't tell us what the best climb speed is And so that's what we're going to try and figure out. How does this airplane fly? So we're basically going to make our own pilot notes for this thing. And it's not going to take that long. And then we'll go for a quick test flight and we'll see what it actually does. Okay, so I have a, I don't need that open anymore. <laughs> We'll keep this open just for reference for a minute. Ah, uh, shoot, I don't have, uh, don't tell me. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, let's look at this, because I made some pilot notes here. So just given some basic information, like the wingspan, the wing area, we can figure out what the aspect ratio is. Because that's important for induced drag calculations. Um, I have a little thing here somewhere. What is, uh, what is aspect ratio? It's the ratio of span to average cord. So that's why I got the screenshot here. This is the span, and then this is the cord, right? So span times cord equals area, or you know, length times width equals area. That's how it works. Or rearranging some equations here, you know, you end up with span squared divided by area gives you the aspect ratio. And it turns out to be 9.4 on this airplane, which is pretty high. Not quite glider territory, but you know, it's getting up there. Okay, we got propeller diameter. And um, so I guess there were some accidents early on related to the propeller 
gear reduction ratio and some harmonic frequencies and flutter and stuff like that. So they changed the reduction ratio. And um, they went with a smaller propeller. I guess the, uh, you know, with the lower reduction ratio or higher, depending how you look at it, <laughs> um, they had a bigger propeller, like 15 foot. When they went to the 16 to 9 ratio from the 16 to 7, um, they would have had to make the propeller smaller because the propeller is actually turning higher RPM now relative to the engine, right? So uh, I converted the metric values here. I'm going, I'm using an engine chart from an A20 because it's the same engine and it's the same power ratings and everything. So 1600 horsepower for takeoff at 2400 RPM. That occurs at 45 inches of manifold pressure. And 45 inches is what? 114 centimeters. So the manifold pressure gauges on this airplane are in centimeters. So we need to, we should know that. Likewise, maximum continuous rich is 1,350 horsepower at 2,300 RPM using 36 and a half inches or 930 millimeters, 93 centimeters. Okay. Okay, so what performance are we given? We're given that it does 360 kilometers an hour at sea level using maximum continuous horsepower. We're gonna assume that it's max continuous. They're not gonna test an airplane like this using takeoff power, like that's ridiculous. That's just to get the airplane off the ground, cleaned up, clear the obstacles, and you're back to continuous power. So there's the power settings. So now we can start calculating some things. Um, so notice all we need, all we need to do these calculations is span an area so we can figure out the aspect ratio. We need the propeller diameter the weight of the airplane, obviously, and the engine horsepower. That's it. And one, some data point for speed. So as long as we have like a speed with a corresponding horsepower output and altitude, we're good. Okay, so here's the lift equation. The lift, this is in pounds. Um, is the lift coefficient times the indicated airspeed squared, that's knots, times the wing area in square feet, and divided by 295. So then what is lift coefficient? What is this CL component here? That's the component that is due to the angle of attack and the airfoil shape. So as you increase angle of attack, right, the lift go, the lift increases up to the stall angle. How much does the lift increase with angle of attack? Well, the it varies approximately two times pi times the sine of the angle of attack up to the stall angle. So it's, a, it's approximately, you know, this is infinite. This is for an infinite span wing, which doesn't exist in the real world, right? But so this is like a maximum theoretical value of, you know, this works out to like 0 0.11 per degree of angle of attack. Then there's a correction factor for aspect ratio. So, you know, we plug our aspect ratio of 9.4 in there and we find out that the 
the lift increase is only at about 75% of this theoretical value. Well, that's, that's actually for an aspect ratio of six. But we can, you know, we, could do, we can plug our aspect ratio in there and figure out what it is. So let's see. One plus two divided by 9.4 inverse 82%. So instead of 75%, it's 82% of the theoretical value for this wing. Okay, so in level flight, we know what the lift is because it's equal to the weight. So we can solve for the lift coefficient here. We plug in our weight of, uh, you know, 160,000 pounds and our speed of 194 knots at sea level and the wing area, 3,700 whatever square feet. Lift coefficient is 0.335. Okay. Why do we need to know the lift coefficient? Because it's used in the induced drag formula, which we're going to get to in a minute. Here's a formula for to calculate the thrust at the same speed. So plug in 194 knots. Horsepower is, you know, 1350 times six, right? Six engines. And uh, E is propeller efficiency. Um, if you don't know what it is, just, you know, 80% is a good guess. Uh, more refined calculations, you know, tells me that it's about 77%. But, you know, 80% is a good guess. If you don't know, if you, if you don't have any idea at all, just use 80%. You're going to be not too far off. So we got 10,000 almost 500 pounds of thrust. And static thrust, here's a formula for static thrust. And it's going to be close. It's going to be fairly close. Maybe not perfect, you know, but it's. I'm trying to keep it simple here because thrust calculations are kind of complicated. We're trying to keep it simple. These formulas are pretty good, actually. This works out pretty good. Power of one engine. So 1350 times 14.1 feet diameter raised to the power of two thirds times 8.26 times the number of engines, six. And we end up with 35,000 pounds of static thrust. So you can see that thrust decreases with airspeed with for propellers for jets it doesn't right it pretty much stays the same um so you know we, we're, we're less than one third of our thrust at our uh, maximum speed here the point of doing this static thrust calculation is so now you can draw a line you can draw a straight line from your static thrust to your maximum speed, right? So now you have the thrust at pretty much at all air speeds. And it's gonna be close. I mean, it, it it's not a perfectly straight line, but it's, it's pretty close. If you just draw a straight line, it's gonna be close enough. Okay. So now you know what the thrust is at all speeds right for that power setting flies okay um so now the drag drag equation is the same as the lift equation only you have a drag coefficient instead of a lift coefficient so again plugging in our numbers you know 194 knots squared wing area we know the drag is equal to the thrust because we're flying at a constant speed. We're not accelerating. That's our thrust at 194 knots. 
This is our drag coefficient. Okay. But this, this drag coefficient is actually made up of two components. CD0, which is called the zero lift drag, or the in the simulator, in Microsoft Simulator, it's called the parasite drag. Um, parasite drag is kind of mis... Not really the correct term. You know, uh, parasite drag is basically skin friction, which is really only half, you know, of the zero lift drag component. So it's it's... I would call it profile drag myself because that that encompasses everything right that's the form that's the form drag or the pressure drag and the skin friction drag you know that's everything um, but in this simulator they just call it parasite drag whatever it's uh That's what it is. So CD0 is the parasite drag. Then there's a lift uh, dependent component, which is called CDI, which is induced drag or lift induced drag, which gets added. This is a minimum, a minimum value. CD0 is a minimum. And then the induced drag gets added to that. Okay, so there's the formula there. It gets a little more complicated now. It's going to start getting a little more complicated, so just bear with me. So how do we calculate the lift induced drag coefficient? That's why we needed the lift the lift coefficient. So it's the lift coefficient squared divided by all this stuff here, which is pi times the aspect ratio times E, which is the Oswald efficiency. And so over here, what is Oswald efficiency? Overall airplane efficiency accounts for increased profile drag from the entire airframe, the fuselage, landing gear, tail surfaces, everything, not just the wing, above the minimum value due to changes in angle of attack. So, you know, you take an airplane, right, and it's flying along level, it's pretty streamlined. It's, you know, Low, that's where the drag is the lowest, right? Whoops. You start increasing the angle of attack, the drag goes up. Some of it is induced drag. Some of it is profile drag. Um, so what they do with the math here is they lump the increase in profile drag they lump it in in with the induced drag so it's not it's not really induced drag but it's lumped in with the induced drag because it behaves the same way it increases exponentially with angle of attack so that's why the e is in the induced drag formula but really it's not it's not just induced drag it's it's to account for the increase in profile drag as well Okay, so I hope that makes sense. It's a little complicated. But that's how it works. So it's an overall airplane efficiency. That's what it is. Um, a, you know, I put here practical range is approximately 0 0.6 to 0 0.9. There are always exceptions. But that's the vast majority, you know, of the ranges where most airplanes are. So in the middle of that range, you would use 0.75 as a guess. And you're not going to be too far off. However, 
aircraft where induced drag is lower, so airplanes with high aspect ratios, like this one, tend to have lower airplane efficiency or lower Oswald efficiency. I know that sounds counterintuitive, right? That's why it's a little complicated to understand this concept. So yeah, the induced drag is low, but the increase in profile drag is high, right? Because it, it, it's a higher, because profile drag is a larger proportion of the total drag because induced drag is low, right? So that's why the airplane efficiency factor is lower. So for this airplane, we might want to go with 0 0.6 instead of 0.75. Okay, so that's what I did. And, you know, so going back to our formula here, we plug the numbers in, right? We know what the lift coefficient is, 0.335. We know what E is, it's 0.6 and our aspect ratio, and we get a induced drag coefficient of that. So now, now we can find the CD0 because we know what the total drag is, right? Because we figured that out up here. And then, and we just figured out what the induced drag is, so we subtract that, and we get this number here. So in your flight model config file, this is your parasite drag coefficient. Now, as they modeled this airplane, it's it's higher, it's much higher. So there's there's too much drag on this airplane. They have, I think the value is 0 0.023, and then they have a 10% you know, multiplier on top of that, 1.1 scalar. So already there's too much parasite drag. Okay, moving on. Now we can calculate, so since we know what the thrust is, right, at all speeds, we can now figure out what the drag is at all speeds. So now we can take the thrust and subtract the drag so we get an excess thrust and we can figure out what the climbing ability of the airplane is. So the ability to climb at any speed is a function of excess thrust, like I just said, thrust minus drag. The excess thrust to weight ratio is the sine of the climb angle. And then when you multiply that by the true airspeed, you get the vertical, you know, it's a triangle, right? It's trigonometry. Sine of the angle, vertical component, it gives you your vertical speed. So there's the formula to calculate the climb rate at any given true airspeed. Now I'm only dealing with initial climb performance here at sea level. So, you know, in theory, Indicated speed is equal to true airspeed. And by indicated speed, I mean like equivalent airspeed, what they call equivalent airspeed, or calibrated airspeed. Um, we're just going to go with indicated speed. It's the same as true airspeed, to keep it simple. At sea level. So there's the formula. So now, you know, it's a good idea to use Excel or something like that, a spreadsheet, to do these calculations because then you can do it for all, you know, for all airspeeds and you can graph it. You know, you can come up with a nice curve and um, you can figure out where the lowest drag is. You can figure out where your, where your maximum rate of climb occurs what the best angle of climb speed is, what the best glide ratio is, 
glide for range, glide for endurance, you know, all these things we can just figure out now, no problem. And so that's what I've done. So here's what the flight envelope looks like. Again, this is using continuous power, right? So you can see, you know, our max speed is about 360. It's, it's off a little bit here for some reason, but 355. I mean, it's very close to the published figure there. And the maximum climb rate occurs at, you know, it's about two meters a second at about 238, let's say 240 kilometers an hour. And how does that compare to what they give us in the chart here? So 1300 and I'm using 1350 because that's what the engine chart says. So I don't, I don't know where they got this number from, if it's converted from metric or what. There could be a conversion error there or whatever. So I'm not, I'm going with 1350. 73,000 kilograms. You know, they're saying uh, 1.2 or 1.52. Okay, and my chart's saying about 2, 1.8 something, 1.98. So the calculations are predicting a little bit higher climb rate than what they give us here. And again, I don't know if this is a calculated value or a, a number they got out of a hand, out of a, you know, the handbook for the airplane or they don't tell us, right? So we don't know where these numbers come from. But knowing, whoops, I didn't want that. Sorry, <laughs> don't want that yet. But the important part here is that it occurs at about 240 kilometers an hour, right? And they don't give us the best climb speed. So we just figured it out. And all these other speeds we can find out now too. So the best angle of climb occurs at 210 kilometers an hour, 1.85, slightly less climb rate. Glide for range, glide ratio 16.7 at 285, rate of descent 4.7 meters per second. And then at light weight, you know, it occurs at a lower speed, lower rate of descent, same ratio, basically. And endurance is the speed that gives us the lowest rate of descent. So it's a little bit less, right? A little bit smaller rate of descent here versus here. And it occurs at a slower speed. So if you're loitering, you know, or holding or doing something like that, and you're trying to save fuel, that's the speed you want to fly at, at this weight. You know, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're at the, near the end of your flight and you're doing a descent, you pretty much want to fly at your best range speed your best glide for range 285 that's the lowest angle of descent so there we just figured out a whole bunch of stuff now I wanted to show you in my spreadsheet here So the blue, the blue curve is what we just figured out. That's what we just calculated. The red curve is how they modeled it. So it's slower. Or I mean, it's, this is still calculated performance. I haven't test flown it yet. But this is what I'm expecting to see in the simulator. Slower, speed, 
and a much higher climb rate that occurs at a much lower speed. So about 190, 190 kilometers an hour, over 600 feet a minute. Why? Why they did? Why it's like this? I don't know. Maybe they just, they, you know, who knows? I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what data they had. Maybe they don't know how to do this stuff, how to calculate these things. Um, that's why I'm doing this video. All right, let's go for a flight. So I should be at uh, close to loaded weight there, 73,000 kilograms. And we are at, oh, we're gonna go full screen. We are at Latte Correr Airport, which is a lake in France. It's near, uh, it's not too far from What the hell did I want to say? <laughs> I can't even remember the name of the city that it's not far from. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I don't know my French cities, unfortunately. But um, let's see here. So Toulouse, Toulouse is down here. It's not too far away. And Bordeaux. There we go. Bordeaux. Not too far from Bordeaux. And little lake here on the coast. And right here is where the the factory used to be, I believe. Now there's a museum there. So this is a like a seaplane museum now, today. And uh, is that it there? No, the mu you know what? No, this is the old, this is the old factory, I think. Look, there's an airplane right there, look. I think there is a museum here now, or maybe the museum is further up here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. There's a museum around there somewhere. And um, so let's go fly. Props are full forward. Now I think takeoff manifold pressure should be about 114 we said, right? And I think they've actually modeled it closer to 130. It's like about 1280. So I think the manifold pressure is off a little bit for takeoff. Flaps are down. The ailerons droop with the flaps. Now this airplane does some things really nicely. Like it, um, the way it takes off the water is pretty nice. Eh, we're a little bit light, but eh. Only 2,000 pounds. So I want to show you one of the reasons why they may have gone with higher thrust at lower speed is because they might have had problems getting this thing off the water. It's just a theory of mine. I don't know, but I'll show you in a second here as we go.
Okay, we got some speed. Now, if I pull full back on the elevator, okay, this thing won't accelerate. It stops accelerating. <laughs> and so you kind of have to let it, let it build up some speed. So we start pulling back a little bit now, around 80, 85. There's full up elevator. Still doesn't want to leave the water. There it goes. So. So let's climb at 190. Let's try to climb at one. Let's first of all, let's throttle back to about uh, 2300 RPM and you know, our continuous power is going to be about a thousand if it's in proportion. So about, I mean, a hundred, hundred centimeters there. And we'll go 2300 on the RPM. Bordeaux Center, Charlie Foxtrot, Echo Mike Delta is type two miles northwest of Lima Foxtrot Bravo for 700 feet. Request flight following. Okay, now we want to climb at about 190, right? Because I figured that's what the best uh, climb speed was going to be as the airplane was modeled. And you can already see... Echo Mike Delta, acknowledge last transmission. I'm not acknowledging. I'm busy right now. So I'm trimming. I'm trying to trim here for uh, 190. Echo Mike Delta, acknowledge last transmission. And we predicted the climb rate should be over three meters per second, right? Echo Mike Delta, did you copy? At this speed. And it looks to be, that's where it looks to be like. We're at three meters a second right now. So it's pretty close, pretty close to the calculated. Okay, see ya. So I'm gonna say it's pretty close to the calculated figure there. So yeah, the airplane climbs too good versus what we uh, figured it should do. All right, let's, uh, well, we still have flaps down too. Hold on. <laughs> that throws a wrench into it now, doesn't it? It doesn't seem to change anything actually. No, we're still doing over, th we're still, yeah, we can still climb here at uh, three meters a second. Okay, we're going to descend now to close to the ground and see what kind of speed we get, level speed. As you recall, we figured the airplane was going to be slower than 360, right? I'm going to go neutral trim. Now let's go neutral trim and see where it wants to fly. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There's a lake. I mean, it does feel heavy. The roll rate is not, it's got a lot of inertia behind it.
And if we kick the right rudder here, it kind of rolls a little bit. A lot of drag in the side slip. Okay. But it's not bad. It's not too bad. It feels reasonable, I guess, for such a large airplane. And given that we're not flying very fast, you know, I would expect it to be kind of sluggish at the lower speed. Okay, let's uh let's do an overfly of the museum. And do a speed run out over the water. So I think this is our museum right here. Is that it in there maybe? Or is it over here? No, maybe that's it over there. Actually, that's it over there, I think, maybe. Anyways. <laughs> All right, let's get out over the water here. What's our speed? 280. Okay, let's, let's get level here. And uh, let's see what it does. Yeah, it looks to be about 290. Two eighty five, maybe. Two eighty five to two ninety, so you know it's pretty much flying as predicted given the high drag coefficient. Alright, let's do a stall test here. Let's take let's do a little bit of a zoom climb. As much as you can zoom one of these things. Bleed some speed off. I need almost full up elevator in these turns. It's really not very effective. I'm not even banking steep, like 20 degrees maybe. All right, let's throttle back a little bit. Level off, and let's see if we can stall this thing. Oh, there it goes, right there at 10 degrees. 10 degrees angle of attack. Okay, what, I didn't notice the airspeed, so, because I, <laughs> Wasn't prepared for that. Let's see. More controlled here. OK, 
Okay, it's under a hundred. Ninety-five, ninety-four. There it is, about ninety, ninety-two. Okay, we're going to say about 92 knots, fully loaded, clean configuration. Let's put the flaps down. Try it again. Not much different. There's 91. Almost 10 degrees there. Yeah, 90. Duh. It's only about two knots different. That doesn't seem right. Whoop. Dropping a wing. So the flaps don't do hardly anything. Let's get the flaps back up again. All right. Um, okay, so the flaps did almost nothing. And this performance, what did I, what were we getting? 290, 285. So it's even slower. It's even slower than predicted here. Um, but we were able to climb at three meters a second at 190. So, yeah, I would say the performance is off a little bit. As you can see here. Let's test the, uh, let's test some glide performance or descent. Let's do some descending. Actually, I don't know what the best glide is as modeled. I know what it should be. <laughs> should be, you know, 4.7 meters per second. <laughs> At 285 clicks, which is, uh, wow, okay. Well, we know that's not going to be the case. All right, I'm just going to, I'm going to slew up here. Okay, let's pull the power back. Oh my God. Look at this thing. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even get up to 280 kilometers an hour. Look at the dive angle on this thing. Okay, we're almost at 280 there now. Let's start pulling the nose up a little bit. Ugh, that's about it.
This thing's dropping like a rock. VSI is off to scale. What does that say? 2,700 feet a minute? Yikes. There's a lot of prop drag here, guys. A lot. Probably way too much. Like, this thing should be a glider. Basically. I think a helicopter glides better than this. Okay, forget that. I want to try something here for a second. Let's go way up here. Way up. Okay. Throttle to idle. Let's try and hit 360 in a dive with the engines at idle. Let's see if we can do that. Now remember, this is supposed to be our maximum level speed, right? Okay, right there. Whoa, no, we got to dive a bit more. This is going to give us an idea of how much prop drag there is because... Remember, we're supposed to be able to fly level at max continuous power at this airspeed. Okay, look at look at the dive angle on this thing. Look at that. Let's try something. Let's go vertical. <laughs> Terminal velocity dive. Here we go. Look at this, it's hardly accelerating. Barely accelerating. That's it. 250 knots. Hmm. That's an awful lot of prop drag. When you can't exceed 250 knots, in a vertical dive. I mean, this thing weighs 160,000 pounds. That's 160,000 pounds of drag at 250 knots. Really? Okay, something's off there. Something's way off there. With the propeller. Something's going on with the propellers there for sure. All right, let's land this thing. Call it a day. Do 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 do. Okay, let's see here.
Uf. So the prop animations there was pretty good. Seems to match the sound effect pretty good. It slows down very quickly on the water. So what kind of conclusions can we draw about this thing? It's too slow. It climbs too good. And there's an awful lot of prop drag. And the manifold pressure gauge is wrong, I think. And handling wise, I don't know, it was reasonable, I guess. The elevator seems really sluggish. The ailerons are maybe a little too much inertia there, maybe just a little. It seems like a lot, like really a lot of inertia there. And but otherwise it was fairly stable, you know, fairly definitely feels heavy and sluggish. But I just wanted to show you, you know, what you can figure out just with some basic information. And uh, so that's it for this airplane for now. And I got more airplanes to look at. Uh, you know, there's a tri-motor was just released. I want to look at the Shrike uh, Twin Comanche, the Norseman. Lots of, lots of airplanes. I'm way behind, guys. I'm way behind. <laughs> but uh, this is a good weekend, you know, Flight Sim Expo weekend. This is a good weekend to get cranking on some videos. And uh, so we'll see you soon.